A prayer comes from Zephaniah, and that's three books back behind Mark. So let me find it here. Yes, I know it's in here. Zephaniah, there you are. I know you all knew that. The prayer comes, and we hear the word of God. The Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty one, a savior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in silent satisfaction. And in his love, he will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them. He will exult over you with singing and with joy. We pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank Dr. Cobb for letting me be here, not only be here, but occupy this magnificent pulpit again. I thank you and ask you my gratitude for letting me choose the scriptures this day. I wish you'd left some sermon notes up here. It would have helped me as well. <laughs> the scriptures this morning are so strong, but I'm going to have to expand a little bit on them. So you may know the truth, St. Clement's body of Christ, and you all who are visiting, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you because you have led me to love the Word of God, you, this peoples, both St. Clement's people and non and past. St. Clement's people. You have encouraged me to joyfully rejoice as a unified body of Christ. You have allowed and encouraged and forgave me. You have helped me be part of my working out my own salvation in fear, holiness, and trembling as St. Paul writes it. Yes and amen. And I fully embrace the one that I knew all about, but through you, I met him, who I knew about, but I knew him. I met him. Yes, in this powerful body of Christ, I met Jesus fully as Lord and Savior, as Son of God, as the crucified and resurrected one. I praise the Lord for that. Okay, now listen up, for I never want to imply nor suggest that I worked out my salvation or that I earned my salvation. That's not what it says. It says, you've been given salvation, now work it out. You've been given that. You don't need to work for it. That's your gift. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to just keep it or are you going to work it out? Jesus' final words on the cross Help me to work that out because God raised him from the dead. I needed and ex did accept that all by faith. And now I'm about working it out. Working it out after receiving it. After receiving it, sharing what it means. Sharing the gifts. Sharing the adoption which we receive when we are baptized. We are adopted as God's children. The power of the Holy Spirit to follow him as best Daily, we can see the grace of God. Again, to every one of you, and I seriously mean this, if I have offended you, I ask your forgiveness. If I have offended any of you, please, please forgive me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask. Forgiveness, ah, <laughs> that word is a middle name for St. Clement because as I began to come again to this pulpit, 
I got flashbacks. That means it was working. <laughs> My first Sunday service, eight o'clock one morning in the summertime. And we had a, a nice group like this. Um, it was good. I, I had already met with the women of the church that week, uh, chaired by Susan Mayfield. I'd already gone to the bargain box and been <clears throat> introduced to Mrs. Najib Haddad. Um, I had gone to the Christian Education Committee meeting by Mr. Frank Halla, uh, where we were considering Curcio and uh, Faith Alive. I'd already been to the vestry, led by Ricky Fuel. Uh, the topic was something new, finances. And let's see, uh, the, the Perry School, I had met with that board, led by Tom Gunning, because the topic was, in the light of the current headmaster retiring and leaving, no, not retiring, just leaving, the fine print of your call, Ron, was that the rector always acts as the interim headmaster in case of an absence. It was a good week. It was a good week. <laughs> I had met with the youth, youth choir, met by the Reverend Michael Clickman of Bangs fame, and that 40 youth voice choir. Oh, Rick, you were such a handsome young man, Rick Miller. <laughs> Uh, and, 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 and then we talked more about the, the youth choir continuing to no longer be in McKee Chapel, but to continually be here in the main service at least once a month, the youth choir. So strong. I met with the adult choir and its eight paid choir members. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> this was the old days when we paid the choir. And, and I met with the organist whose name was Clement. Does that give you an idea of kind of the... Clement, St. Clement, uh, going on here. I met with a pastor of the downtown congregations. Okay, back to the subject, forgiveness. I soon, very just soon, discovered what it means, and now I know St. Clement is a very forgiving body of Christ. Very forgiving. I know because, as I recall that first worship service, Book of Common Prayer 28, ah, uh, in a 1940 hymnal. I remember after finishing a, the first sermon. Oh, gosh, it was so good up here. And it closed with a baseball in my hand, uh, about the size of your nose, uh, about the size of this ball. <laughs> it was a hard ball, not a soft ball, a hard ball. And I can remember closing that sermon and saying, we are all now going to play ball together. And that was, that was good. That was a good time to quit. I met with everybody outside later, including the vestry, finance committee, the other clergy, and the search committee. <laughs> and the word was this, pastor, I don't know how it was in New Braunfels, but here we take an offering every service. Oops. I had, I had failed to read the bulletin where it had offering. There it was in black and white. <clears throat> Believe me, forgiveness reigned, and I have never forgotten ever wherever I am to take up an offering, always. <laughs> forgiveness reigns yet again in 1980, after being here seven or eight years, messing up everything that was possible in those short years. I accepted a call to go back home to the Diocese of West Texas in San Antonio to a, a parish. And as I accepted that letter, and then, as you know, we Episcopalians, Anglicans, always put off the installment until we're sure that person's going to come. And I was glad because I wasn't coming. I had a call vestry meeting and said to them that first month of being there and looking for a house, I can't accept your letter. It's not you, but you would hear in either a sermon or a retreat or a vestry meeting that I'm not committed to you. You would know that I'm not fully sold out to be with you. Well, the interesting thing is, Mary Hoover had already sold her home, and uh, I didn't have a job. Uh, Doris took it very well. She... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
being raised during the Great Depression, there was nothing that shocked her. And so um, I called Ricky Fuel, who happened to be heading the new search committee. And I said, I understand you're looking for a pastor. He said, yes, we are. <laughs> may, I, may I submit a name to you? Yes, who is it? Me. <laughs> well, Ron, we'll consider it, but we've got to go through the process. And, uh, and I want you to know that the process, since you've left... Uh, we're into unity here. We're into a unified body of Christ, and uh, the 32 members of the search committee must all agree on your recall. A recall, it sounded kind of like your car. You know, you take it in, get it recalled. <clears throat> the recalling process was on, and Ricky Fuel, God bless him, he said, why don't we take a straw vote just to see how many would let Ron come back? 31 yeses. One no, with certain words from Walter Collins that were not appropriate for a mixed congregation. <laughs> and so Rick and the 30 others continued to talk and pray. And finally came the serious vote, 31 yes, one abstention. <clears throat> that was unanimous enough. We came back, and Rick had said, there'd be no change in salary, we won't give you a, a raise nor a decrease, uh, same car allowance. Uh, just come on home. And that's when I knew forgiveness was real at St. Clement because the next 16 years, forgiveness flowed. I will never forget it. I will never forget forgiveness flowing and flowing and flowing. Praise the Lord. I thank God for each one of you. I thank God for all of you who continue to share your lives with Doris and me. I see in each of you, as did the Greeks, coming to Philip. I see Jesus. I see Jesus. I see Jesus in each of you. I believe it was in the late 1980s we had a visiting theologian from Notre Dame Seminary that came to be with us for a whole week. <coughs> He's written books. I don't know his name. I'm not good on names, but I remember what he had. He had a he had a chart board of 40 squares, and he said, <clears throat> Pastor, <clears throat> I'm going to interview your congregation. I'm going to interview this congregation, the body of Christ, and see which of these places get filled in, because these are different places that if they're all filled in, it's a healthy parish. If they're not, then that gives you some guidance of where to get out of the way and let things happen. He interviewed us for the week. At the end of the week, we all looked at the board. Every square was filled. This is a balanced body. A balanced body. Balanced so beautifully as a body of Christ. Well, that was good. Because that meant we could make some plans now. I, as you know, was baptized in a Methodist church as an as 11-year-old believer. Uh, my mom and dad were not church people until after, um, actually until after we came here. Uh, and my father never did get to call me pastor. He always called me rabbi, and I thought that was at least a start. <laughs> uh, but we began to make plans then. We began to think, okay, we're not in a survival mode. We're in a less stretch. So stay with me. One of the first things that happened was a mission board of the vestry chaired by Frank Fuel IV began to meet and in prayer had expanded its outreach to some 41 different, 41 different missions around the world, waters and local. 41. Good stewards, so much that the annual designation is still in place, I believe. The 10% of every dollar that comes into St. Clement, whether it's a gift, whether it's a memorial, whether it's a, a, a tithes and offerings, 10% off the top go into the mission coffers to be used for mission outreach. Very strong. Very strong. Secondly, our worship grew stronger with a, with a volunteer choir. <laughs> With the retirement of our 1908 organ later on, uh, the gift of the Dorrance Roderick Fund. And I remember, how many of you all remember 
how the, where is he? Where the organist used to sit in a hole right over there and the choir was all up here and only the eight members were reading their comic books, <laughs> filling out crossword puzzles. I mean, it was a very active choir. <laughs> that disappeared and we announced we no longer have a paid choir, Mr. Steele, because you all are the choir and the music level of this place came alive. You all are fantastic singers. Some of you are actually on key, but that's beside the point. Your heart is in it. The Perry School with this expansion in the Robert Gibson Gym became designated by the National Award to be the first Blue Ribbon School in this whole area. The first Blue Ribbon School in this whole area. It still is. Small groups called extended family groups and numerous Bible studies became the norm following the Holy Spirit-led precepts and Bethel series of teachings. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, came alive. The three Faith Alive weekends we had beginning in 1973, as well as numerous speakers and weekend retreats, kept us continuing to grow spiritually, kept us accountable for each other, kept us from becoming God's frozen people rather than God's chosen people. We became chosen to learn his word, to have Bibles in the pew. In fact, I've got to tell this story on Mary Hoover. I'm going to see her later today. She was visiting a church in Austin and came out of it and said, Pastor, where are your Bibles? And he said, do what? Where are your Bibles? There's Bibles supposed to be in the pew. And he said, oh, no, no. She came home and said, Ron, what happened? How did we get these Bibles? And I said, we just use them a lot. We do. Mary Hoover, evangelist in Austin. We planted another mission congregation on the west side, St. Francis on the Hill, a loving parish. We saw us bless 200 members to have the first initial service there. They could come back after a year or two. Only one did. That was interesting. But they began on the servant heart of many, including the Ray McNuck family and Jean Myrick. We rejoiced in the election of an evangelical teacher of the word of God to be bishop, the right Reverend Terence Kelshaw of Trinity Seminary in Pittsburgh. He loved St. Clement because the parish he was raised in in England was named St. Clement. And I can remember Dr. Cobb the first day he came. He, let me see. When Bishop Trelease came, his vestments were burned the first time here. Not on purpose, but accidentally. And then <laughs> Bishop Kelshaw, I made sure his vestments were hung in a safe place. And he went right over to his chair and the acolyte was there. Because we hadn't had a bishop for a while. And the bishop looked at the acolyte and the acolyte looked at the bishop. And the bishop came over and sat where I sit sometimes in the little chair over there. <laughs> Twelve of this body accepted seminary training away. Listen to these names and see their faces. Ellis Mayfield, Jr., Chuck Collins, Steve Capper, Jim Adams, Jerry Harris, Earl King, Chuck Boldeen, Rocky Schuster, Craig Barrett, John Dixon. Ah, oh, John, is that you? Ah, Clark Longfield, and a former senior warden, one of the youngest we'd ever had here, Bill Francis, also went to seminary. We have our own Don Morrill. We have a Rick Milliron here from this body. And we have a young doctor studying to be a deacon, Dr. Brown, Courtney Brown. And at that time, and I'm just about to finish that list, the Judy Shoemaker English Speaking Center, C-E-N-T-R-E -E is how we spell it in the military. The Shoemaker English Speaking Center began. And at one time there were as many as 300 day students here from the neighborhood and for those seeking U.S. citizenship. Seeking U.S. citizenship. 
In the light of all these factors in individual meetings, <clears throat> our visiting theological consultant affirmed that we had every square filled. Only by the working of God's Holy Spirit in a place where I had asked a residing bishop who prayed, prayed here with us and preached here, John Allen, 1980, Pentecost Sunday. I asked him as we walked in the garden, not alone, but together. <clears throat> and I said, Bishop, let me ask you something. Why, why, would, why would someone build a worship structure that seats 400, 500 when there are only the best 200 members? And he looked at me, and he smiled, and he said, Vision, Thompson, vision. And I think he was trying to say something to me, because I, I remembered that. Vision, vision. This was built first, after the downtown wooden parish. Only the working of God's Holy Spirit could equip us for any kind of ministry, and it was at his timing. He called, he led, he unified us all with Jesus as the head, and such was followed all those who served him here in El Paso and around the world. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Is that not true for each one of us? The joy of the Lord is our strength. To be faithful, to die to self, my way. The works of our Salvation Army with its core with love at our headship. Did we not have an awesome God? We do have an awesome God. He will not take his hand off of his people. Do we not have the only Savior who became as we are, that we might become as he is, a servant child of the God Almighty? A Savior and Lord whose Holy Spirit comes and comes to this place. And thank you for your prayer. Come Holy Spirit. Come to this place comes to us with his glory and grace, comes with his fire that burns in our hearts, kindles the flame that it starts, sets us apart to always declare him as our first love. First love. That's the love. It's always come Holy Spirit. Let us look for, and I can say that with only one eye, but let us look for <clears throat> Seek out others. See Jesus in each other. And those whom he sends to be among us. A man wiser than I once said, and I praise God for that statement. God sends the people here. He asks us to be equipped and to equip them. We call people. Yes, we, we, we search for people, but he sends, he sends you all here. None of you are here by your own choice. We are here because he sent us and he sends others. May we find Jesus in each of those to serve him as he wills. <clears throat> and one of the many powerful songs, and that means I'm getting ready to sing, so <clears throat> if you have children, kind of get them <laughs> filling out something. One of the most powerful songs we have from the youth choir comes to mind here called the servant song. Brother, sister, let me be your servant. Brother, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are brothers on the road. I will hold the Christ like for you in the nighttime of your fear. I will hold the Christ like for you in the nighttime of your fear. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. I will weep. When you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and your sorrow till we've seen this journey through. And when we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such 
harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and Christ's agony. In the name of the Father, Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen.